Hi, everybody. I'm Jarrett Rush, and I'm the Director of Content Marketing here at Idea Grove. And on screen with me today is Megan Chesterton. She heads up our creative and marketing teams for the agency. And we are a, a group of the agency's makers. And one of the things that we make are uh, websites. And uh, that's what we want to talk about today. So thank you, Megan, for giving us a few minutes of time. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I have been a uh, part of the website creation process for uh, about a decade now. I know you've been doing it probably just as long. We've made several websites together. I feel like for me, uh, I've seen things shift pretty dramatically you know, in that time. And I'm curious uh, for you, how have you seen things change around web design since you started doing it? You know, Where have we been and, and where are we headed? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that has been a huge shift is that website design, it's been a lot about pyrotechnics. Um, you know, how cool is your website? What does it do? What's the fancy things? How impressive is it? Um, and in the last, I don't know, couple of years, um, that's kind of shifted a bit. Uh, everyone still obviously wants a really good looking website, but the way it functions has become way more important in terms of the story it's telling. Um, and then also uh, the relationships that it's building um, in terms of what it says. Um, you know, it, it used to be that all that mattered was how much the CEO liked it. Um, Cause you know, when you go through a website process, the CEO says, I don't like it, make it orange or whatever, you know, that ends up being, but it's now more about the actual user. It's about what they want, not necessarily what I want or what you want. Um, it has to be made for the person that we're trying to talk to. Do you think one of the things uh, potentially, uh, at least causing the problems early on when, when, when it was all about pyrotechnics uh, is yep. the fact that we used the, the word design? Design, I think th that, that language uh, brings up the idea of visuals. You know, it's all about how does it look as opposed to how does it function? I know when we create sites here, uh, for clients, it's incredibly collaborative. And I'm, I'm the words guy. I'm, I'm you know, and, and so, but I'm involved at, very, at the very beginning of the process. So, you know, I'm there with you and, and Cecil and the rest of the team. And we're, we're talking about how does this site function? How does it perform? How do we get it to accomplish the goals that, that the client wants? Do you think that, that we use the, the language web design? Does that sort of, was it the thing that was maybe causing some of that, the issues early on? Yeah, I do think it's part of it. Um, you know, we think of design as a visual thing. So a lot of times we focus on the visual. What does this thing look like? And we don't uh, think about all of the other components, the other things that have to go into that design process. Um, you know, one of the things about being a graphic designer, it's obviously I'm a graphic designer by trade. That's where I started out in my career. Um, graphic design can go into so many different ways. Um, you know, it's, it's design is used in motion pictures. It's used in um, brochures. It's the way that we talk about it and the word thinks makes us think about visuals. But when it comes to websites, there's just so much more to it. Um, it's a lot deeper than just, yeah, let's just make it look nice. Um, and I think that's, that's something that most of the industry, just all industries are starting to figure out. So, so getting a little more specific there, what are the things that are people getting, that, what are some of the things that people are getting right currently with this, with this shift? And then what are some things that they're, they're getting wrong? So when we talk about the things that people are getting right, I mean, we still want people to have, you know, we still want really good looking websites, right? But that, that's still something that we want to happen. Um, but, you know, there's been a huge shift in recent laws that I think that people have been paying a lot of attention to uh, for GDPR and CCPA. Uh, so, you know, for the most part, people have seen those <clears throat> and they've said, oh yeah, we need to do that because we need to follow these protocols. But what they're getting wrong is they're not understanding the reasons behind why they need to do that and kind of the, the deeper side of creating a website that is secure and that has, you know, it's only asking for the amount of information that you need and also keeping that information safe. Because um, for all of this, you know, we're thinking about the users, right? So the users that are on the site that are giving you their information that are experiencing your website and your information that you're putting out there. CCPA and GDPR 
are about generating a safe environment and dealing with the information that they give you in a way that is morally correct, ethically correct as well, um, and puts a little bit of the power back on them so that if you trick them with your marketing skills, um, you know, they, they have a method to reach out and say like, hey, I don't want your emails anymore. Um, but that's one of the things that I think people are paying attention to it, but not the reasons behind it. Um, so it goes in line with that shift that we've seen. And speaking of shift, where are things headed in the next few years? What's what's coming next for the, the website design process? Yeah, so uh, accessibility and ABA compliance, which kind of goes in line with that GDPR, CCPA, but for completely different reasons. Um, web developers have always been aware of the fact that you have to have certain things, certain code in place to make sure that your website is um, accessible for everybody. Um, but in the next few years, we are absolutely going to see some laws um, and more regulation come out about ADA compliance. Um, if you're not familiar with it, that's specifically um, ensuring that users that use, well, users that use, users that have to use your website uh, through things like screen readers, um, maybe they only use a keyboard, maybe they only use a mouse, uh, just for different reasons, different disabilities. Um, you know, color blindness, all those different things, um, making sure that they can all use your site just the same as an able-bodied person could. Um, so that, that's one huge thing that I'm, I'm expecting to drop at any point. Um, and everyone's going to be scrambling to go, oh, no, we got to figure this out because uh, it's a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. The other thing, um, most people are already aware of this, but Google has rolled out their uh, core web vitals. Um, just over the past year, and I think it's actually May. Um, I could be wrong about that. You might want to <laughs> double check my dates. But in May, uh, those are going to start becoming part of how your website is actually um, showing up in rankings on Google. So how fast your website loads and how fast your content is is about to also become incredibly important. So if you are doing all of those pyrotechnics and doing a whole lot of crazy things on your site, then it's not loading well, it's gonna, gonna start to hurt you. One of the things we believe as an agency is that you build your business by, by building trust. And we think that really extends to everything that you do. And that includes uh, the website creation process. And without the website creation process, the website, like your, your website uh, has to build, to build trust. But, but as you're, as you're designing a website, what does trust in your web design look like? How is it different uh, from what most people are used to right now? Well, it doesn't necessarily look a certain way. Um, you know, when we talk about trust-centered website design, the definition of it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is creating an online experience that is specifically um, organized to build trust with an audience. So putting uh, content in place, putting, um, you know, things like uh, trust badges, fields, Better Business Bureau, things like that, um, to make sure that your users have evidence that you're trustworthy, um, that your brand is trustworthy, because that, it goes beyond your website, right? Your website is kind of the uh, first engagement you have with users a lot of times, especially now, um, but if they don't see reasons on your site for why they should trust you, then they're not going to. Um, so let me give you a really good example. Um, if you go to, imagine going to a web page and there's something that you want to download, I don't know, maybe it's a free ebook, maybe it's a guide for something that you could use some help figuring out. Maybe it's core web vitals. Um, the... You, you go on the page, you go through the form, you, you enter your information, you hit the download button. And maybe you don't notice, but there's a checkbox towards the bottom of the form. It's already checked and it says something about subscribing you to their newsletter. Um, that is a pretty sneaky marketing trick that most people are pretty aware of now, but it would be absolutely a no-go in a trust-centered website design program. Um, Reason being, 
that's a marketing tactic that you are literally tricking the user into doing something so that you can continue marketing to them. Mm -hmm. Now, this has been considered almost standard practice for years in marketing. But if we think about it as a user, if you fill that out and then you go and go to your inbox and you have a whole bunch of random emails from that company, you feel tricked. You feel like, well, I didn't want all of this. I didn't ask for all of this. Um, and that's going to damage that relationship you have with that person. So going back to our definition, you know, what we would do in trust-centered web design is say, okay, we're going to give this free thing to this person. Do we even get it? You know, is there a form at all? Um, we we want to think through what that user is looking for and make sure that whatever actions we ask them to do, whatever information we put on the page is going to um, give them a really positive experience so that they feel like they knew what they were getting, they got exactly what they signed up for, um, you know, just all of the things that you would do in a normal trusting relationship. <laughs> You kind of talked a little bit about it there on, on how it's different, but I'm, I'm curious if you maybe could elaborate. Uh, how does a trust-centered uh, web design project differ from something that someone may have experienced, you know, had, at, at, at doing the web design project internally or, or maybe working with another agency? So there are a lot of things that would be the same in terms of, you know, the process is still the same. You still want to do wireframes and page designs and figure out the images and do a little brand guideline, make sure that everything was going to look good. All that stuff would be the same. But there are going to be some specific elements that we would want to, um, we would want to put in place that are really signals to the user in terms of whether or not your company is trustworthy. Um, one of the most popular ways that companies are doing this now is with customer reviews. Um, you know, seeing what other people have said about you is more powerful than what you say about you uh, because it's coming from someone who doesn't have to say that. Um, so trust badges, uh, those fall into that kind of similar category. Uh, and those would be when you see, you know, a guarantee or, you know, free returns and things like that. Um, but also those like Google verified um uh, I think that there's that blue tick on Twitter <laughs> that mm -hmm. it's like, this is really this person. Yeah, the blue uh, so those signs, yeah. So those signs are things that a user is going to see and immediately understand and be able to you know, feel comfortable putting a level of trust in you because you have shown, look, these other people and these other sources who you already trust uh, uh, think that we're trustworthy. So mm -hmm. hopefully you will too. Um, so it's all about making the user feel as comfortable as possible. Um, there are other things there, you know, some of the things we've mentioned beforehand, we would put you know, a really high, um, really high stress and focus on making sure that the website is optimized. Uh, so back to GDPR and CCPA and absolutely ADA. And those are all things that if you don't have them, <laughs> people are not going to trust you. Whether or not you meet the, you know, requirements that you have to to have to do CCPA or something mm -hmm. like that, um, they're still really important. If, if there, people are so used to them now as well that if you're not giving that information and you're not giving them that reason to trust you, they're not going to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, showing the truth is really important. Um, for many years now, uh, well, a very long time, companies have gotten to the point where they go, yeah, maybe stock images aren't the best. Maybe we should show who our actual people are. Um, one of my favorite things that you know, businesses will do these days, especially if they're in some kind of service industry, is you know show an actual picture of a support person on their team. So like GoDaddy, for example, um, when you go to reach out to support, they show a picture of some lady who works in their support uh, support place and they tell you like where she is. Um, she's there smiling and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go talk to Mary or whatever her name is. 
Um, and so things like that are really nice. They put, you know, more substance behind the company instead of just this screen that you're looking at. Um, but, you know, showing real people and telling real stories and then just doing anything you can to foster real conversations on a website uh, is going to be incredibly uh, helpful in terms of uh, gaining that support and the trust of those people. Oh my God, I promised I would take only a little bit of your time and I think we've taken about 10 minutes. And so uh, thank you so much for uh, answering my questions. I really appreciate it. You gave us a lot of great information and things to think about. Awesome. Thanks, Jared. All right, bye.